Hi, Jan here. Welcome back to the channel for the absolute final instalment of The Cloak, the never-ending saga of The Cloak. And it is finally, finally, finally done. So Neil is just modelling it for you. you. You're allowed to move. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, if you just like to sh just do a Time slow work. spin. I don't know how much of this the camera's able to pick up, but but I have to say that I have knitted Aran jumpers in the amount of time that it, in less time than it took to make this cloak. The wool part of it was absolutely a dream. It just cut out beautifully. It stitched up beautifully. Everything was fine. It was all. Oh, you, oh what are you doing? Oh, I've just sorry. It's I've done my, nothing. <laughs> It was this lining that was like sewing water. That's the only way I can describe it. Enough water to cover a football field. Trying to sew that in the dark with somebody else's hands. Because as you know, I've got brain damage, which means I don't have full feeling in this hand. So, And it, as fast as I was doing anything to it, it was just kind of unravelling itself. So I was having to make sure that every single seam was completely enclosed. Every single edge was completely enclosed, which has been an absolute nightmare, which meant that because um, I was going to use the overlocker to start with, because I thought that would give it a really nice finish, but I could not get the overlocker to work um, without rucking it all up and I, I wasted a day if not two days trying to get all the overlocker set up to work on it but I just couldn't do it and in the end I thought well I've worked with satin before and I've done it on ordinary sewing machines so I decided to go with the sewing machine and do French seams but the problem with the French seams with this pattern is this particular pattern didn't give any seam allowance at all it was a, a McCall's um, costume pattern and so doing a French seam means you're using double the amount of um, of the allowance that you would have if, if, if it had had an allowance, but it didn't. So that meant that the one, once I actually completed the inner bit and was about to attach it to the outer bit, the outer bit is slightly too big. So things like the hood, I had to cut down the size of the hood on the wall and restitch that but just every single step of the way it's just been an absolute nightmare and whereas in the past when I've done cloaks and robes and things they've almost invariably been made out of old curtains or fabric that I've picked up really really cheap at car boot sales so there's no pressure on me to get it right you know if it doesn't work out I'll just ditch that one and make another one but this one was Neil's birthday present I was about to say the number well, you can say the number. <laughs> it was Neil's 50th birthday so I wanted to make him a really nice gift and then once I said to you all that I'm going to make it there's also that expectation that if any of you ever see it in real life you're going to be like mm. <laughs> how well did she do <laughs> so there was that pressure on me to try and get it as good as I possibly could and it just wasn't going right at all so and also having to use this bedroom because it's the only one that I could put a table big enough to do this on. We cut it out downstairs by putting two tables together. But because it's wool, all the dog, well, not all of the dog hair. We've got a black dog and a brown dog and their hair doesn't actually show on it. But the white dog, hmm. Neil's... <laughs> Neil was, we were doing a Zoom call yesterday and he put it on to show some people on a Zoom call. So this morning, what have you been doing? An hour picking all the little hairs off and I've probably got about 95% of them, but... It looks good enough. I can see it in the light. But also, I had had the, the wall part of it made, put it on a hanger, hung it on the door. But every time Neil came in to, to bring me a cup of tea or to talk to me or whatever, Neil has as much hair on him as the dogs do because he's always cuddling them so every time he brushed past it it was just picking up so much fur the whole time yeah but all that said i am actually really pleased with it now it's um 
it's lined nicely. I would have preferred the lining to be a little bit longer at the bottom, but in Pagan Ritual, there's not going to be anybody laying on the floor checking people's lining left, are there? No. <laughs> so I figured nobody's going to be that low that they're going to worry about it. Um, the, the length of it itself, that was something that I had to get Neil to try it on and then turn around slowly. And that was a, another afternoon gone because he's doing this and he's doing this and he's doing this and doing this and just trying to get it all. It's like, no, just stand still. Turn a little bit. Turn a little bit. Just like doing it on, on a four-year-old. But eventually, I'm actually really pleased with that length. It's long enough that it's not going to trail, trail in the mud because I've had to send my cloak off to dry cleaners before now because it's it's got so much mud on it from because I'm short and my cloak's long <laughs> so it's going to keep it up out of the mud it's long enough to keep you warm it's big enough to go over whatever you're wearing underneath it at the moment he's got his uh, druid robes on underneath but um, yeah, I thought you were going to put that on with your woolly jumper, but it really doesn't matter. Because <laughs> we've had this situation before where I've tried to explain to Neil what I want him to do, and there's been a huge miscommunication, and it's all gone horribly wrong. So, so we're not doing that this time. But, but anyway, do you want to give a little twirl? Show how lovely it twirls. And of course the obligatory flap. <laughs> Anyone oh, wearing a cloak doesn't have, have a flap. <laughs> but it does mean that the, the one that he's been wearing for the last 25 years was an old one of mine that I've made out of brown velvet curtains. And you won't be wearing that anymore so I won't be able to sell, say to him, pull yourself together anymore. <laughs> and he's got a nice smart cloak. But the thing is that, that I've noticed with it is that I made us both um, the white robes the same. and. I made them huge so that we could put on as many clothes underneath as we needed to because we go off and do a um, winter solstice ritual for the sunrise so it's we get up at what? Four uh, o'clock. Yeah, yeah, well we have to leave home at four o'clock to get there in time because it's uh, at all cannings long barrow so needed to, to make the robes themselves big enough to, to put jumpers, jumpers and things and stuff underneath, underneath yeah. and then underneath the cloak in between the robe and the cloak there is enough room for a jacket if you need one yeah so I've, I've tried to cover all bases here so um well i'm really happy with it i think it's turned out really nice so yeah yeah and i'm just so relieved it's finished <laughs> it just took so long and it was so stressful partly because because of my brain damage i kind of lost my spatial awareness and as you can see it's got an inside and an outside and the fabrics both have a right side and a wrong side and as well as the inside and the outside you've got the bit in the middle where the two wrong sides go together and just trying to get that sort of in my brain working out how to do certain joins and seam, seams and things sometimes I would spend a whole afternoon working on scraps of material so that I knew exactly how I was going to join it together so it would lay flat, it would look good and then I think, right, I know what I'm doing, I'll go and have a cup of tea and then I'll come back and do it. I'll go and have a cup of tea, come back and I've completely forgotten how I got to, to that bit where I was before, you know, so, so then I had to work it all out all over again. So it's been a challenge trying to do things because last time I did anything like this was um, before the massive brain damage. Mm -hmm. So I was working on all cylinders. And now the ones I've got just misfire all the time. But, and you know, I've not done much sewing since I haven't had full control of my hand. You know, I've got control of it, but I don't have the, the same amount of feeling that, that I have in, in my good hand. So it means that it's, it's a bit like sewing with rubber gloves on. You know, if in, when you're doing anything fine, you, where you need fine motor skills, like stitching on this clasp that had to be hand stitched all around there and so you have to have one hand inside the cloak in between the the wool and the lining and then pull the needle through and then back into there and then does that make any sense yeah he's looking at me as if i'm not talking any sense but that's because he's not very very well today and his brain's gone off with the fairies somewhere and 
he's just waiting for me to say yeah you can take it off and go and sit down now so I'm going to call call that it for today I just wanted to show proof that it is actually finished and um yeah so the final cloak installment number five I think that was <laughs> okay so take care lots of love don't forget to like and subscribe okay bye